Hi, today we're going to learn how to process data acquired on the EFT and the MAR spectrometer. The data processing program we use is called NUTS and I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions for processing the data. In episode one we're going to focus on proton data. Core 1D proton data goes. There are several steps that are going to be required including Fourier transforming the data from the time domain to the frequency domain. We're going to flatten the baseline in order to get good integrals and we're going to finally set TMS to zero so that we can get good peak-pick values and chemical shifts. Hi, welcome to episode one of data processing. This demo will show you how to process 1D proton data from the EFT and the MAR spectrometer. After you install the demo software, this nuts icon will appear on your desktop. We'll go ahead and double click that. Notice that it's set to 1D EFT demo software mode. We'll just click OK to get rid of that. And a new version of the NUT software that's going to be a little bit easier for all of us to use. Everything is going to be accomplished by right clicking in the background and using these easy to use pull down menus. First thing we'll do is open a file. When you get into the file manager, you'll notice that all of these files, save the last one, have a .h1 extension. The EFT software always appends a file with what type of data that it is, in this case proton data. Let's go ahead and open up the 98% propylbenzoate file. You notice that it comes up in the time domain and we need to Fourier transform it to the frequency domain. So again we'll right click, find our Fourier transform and just click FT. Notice that the peaks come up some below the baseline, some above the baseline. A process called phasing needs to be done. We have an automated process. We'll go down to the phase manual and click automatic first, second order phase. See how good a job it does. Did a, did a really good job. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and show you why we want to do baseline flattening by just looking at what the integral looks like. You notice that the integration line has a severe slant to it, slanting from the left down to the right. Anytime it intersects a peak, again, it slants from the left down to the right. That's why we're going to do the next routine before we integrate. We'll go from phase spectrum down to flatten baseline, and we'll just use the automatic baseline correction in order to do that. You notice the screen flashed. It already did the baseline flattening. Before we do the integration routine, it's a lot easier to do the integrations if you're zoomed into the peaks that you want to integrate. So I'm going to enter the zoom routine and zoom. Uh, place the mouse on the far left side of the spectrum. Click and while you're holding it, drag through the area that you want to zoom in on. When you're done, you can right click or type control E and it'll give you the zoomed in spectrum. Now the integration routine is going to be entered. We'll go into the integration subroutine instead of automatic integration. And everything in the integration routine starts with a single click. So you click once, you can move this vertical line wherever you want. It, it can do several things. In this case we're going to use it to define the region of an integral. So the first click brings up the line Second click defines one side of the region that you want to integrate. Third click, the other side. So click once, twice, three times. Once, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You'll notice none of the peaks have values on them. So again, we're going to click once to bring up the vertical line have it intersect the integration line of one of the peaks, in this case the peak in the middle. You're going to type the letter V for value and that will bring up a integral relative values box. I know that this is a CH2 because I know what the spectrum is. So I'm going to set that value to 2 under the current relative value. 
And then when I click OK, not only does that one get set to 2, but all the other ones get set to a value relative to this one being 2. So that's why it's called a relative integral. You notice that there's a scroll bar over on the side over here. That can change the step size of the integration line that runs through the peak. Similarly, you can type the letter Z and a second scroll bar will come up over here and you can move those integrations up off the peaks a little bit so it looks a little nicer. Hitting enter gets rid of the second scroll bar and hitting enter again gets you back to the base level. You notice that the integrations disappeared off the screen. They will not print if they're not on the screen so control I is how you can bring those back. There I did it with the mouse, but with the uh, keyboard, I can type control I and turn them on and off. Similarly, you can type a grid on and off, control G for grid. You can change it to data points instead of lines, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different controlled functions. The next thing that I want to do is a little bit of peak picking. Um, we're going to go into the define peak subroutine. But before we do that, I want you to notice one thing about the spectrum. It's one thing, similarly to how we flatten the baseline before we integrated, it's also a good idea to set TMS to zero before you start to do peak picks. There's two different ways we can go about this. You can click right on that peak. You notice that the top of the line is intersecting the peak and while you're doing that type the letter O for offset and just change that to zero and now that's set to zero. Similarly you can enter the zoom subroutine zoom in on that peak and you can do an SZ set zero. Notice that did a little bit better job because you can really see where the peak is now. We will zoom back out again we can show the full spectrum and then zoom to the area that we want to print. Now, we're going to just put in a few peak picks so we can kind of tell what the chemical shift is of these peaks. I'm going to go into the DP defined peak subroutine and just carefully place the cursor on a peak. It has a snap to function, so it does a pretty good job of finding the top of the peak. If you want to, you can put a couple in on the sides. Do four of those here. We'll try to get them right on the top here. One, two, three. I'm going to hit enter to get out of the defined peak subroutine. Notice down here it tells you that you're in the base level again. Notice again that the peak picks are on the screen. So to bring those up, Control P, Control P brings up the peak picks. I'm going to use the mouse wheel to scale the spectrum. I don't want a uh, peak touching the peak picks. You can also use page down for large jumps up and down, or down arrows for small jumps up and down in size. Finally, I am going to print. One thing you want to make sure of is that the Printer is set to landscape mode. It makes a nice, much nicer looking printout. And we'll click OK. Off it goes to the printer. Now that we've accomplished a data processing routine on one spectrum, let's use what you learned today and process the other spectra and try to get nice integrals, peak picks, and TMS set to zero on all the other spectra in the data library.